Hello, brothers and sisters. Thank you again for this opportunity to share God's word with you. This uh, is at the beginning of 2021, and most of us, maybe all of us, are filled with positive anticipation of a great year. And beginnings are wonderful. Beginnings of, of our lives, beginnings of new jobs, beginning of relationships, um, and of course, the big beginning, the beginning uh, that started it all. The Bible starts with that wonderful phrase, in the beginning, God. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And so we have this uh, reminder anytime we open the Bible and look at the starting of the first book of the Bible, reminder that uh, there is a, a great beginning that really helps shape, define who we are and uh, what this world is about. The very fact that there is a creator, a designer, uh, someone above the mutations, the uh, issues of change, uh, the fitting into or uh, surviving uh, hardship, uh, changes of uh, environment, all these contexts um, the, the big picture and the little picture is that uh, God is our source. In a, in a way of uh, thinking, the, um, the wonderful Big Bang Theory, the, the Big Kaboom Theory about how everything started and uh, where physics and astronomy and chemistry and, and other physical sciences uh, can, can push it back to even fractions of seconds, tiny, tiny fractions of seconds uh, after the, that uh, Big Bang. They can't go back to before the Big Bang because uh, in science, you're always looking for cause and effect. And you can't uh, go back to the what they take to be the, the first uh, moment, the first event, the first... Uh, context of uh, energy and, and matter uh, that we can measure. But of course, spiritually revealed by God, uh, we have the Bible uh, and we have uh, the, the great teachings that have come from the Bible that uh, begin with God. And of course, we don't ask who created God because he is defined in part as our creator. So uh, the beginning ultimately is still defined by God, even as we can in the sciences study various kinds of uh, mutations, um, various kinds of uh, stabilities within species or uh, different uh, kinds of, of, of rocks or plants, different kinds of, of pets, different kinds of people as well. And one of the most powerful teachings of the Bible is that we all had the same beginning, that mankind began together and, and that we have one Heavenly Father and that there is one a first couple uh, that are our ancestors, uh, regardless of our ethnicity, however... Um, pure that ethnicity, ethnicity is, or however mixed uh, that ethnicity is, we still have the same creator. We have the same heavenly father. We are uh, called to be, we're called to be one loving, functional, caring family. Part of the problem is that when we talk about family, um, we've all had experience with dysfunctional family family that, honestly, where people don't really love each other, where there is not compassion and care and concern, there's not accountability to one another, uh, where there's not a real sense of fairness. But we've all seen that and maybe experienced it very close at hand, but it uh, is still not the model, not the ultimate model because we have a caring, loving Father, our Heavenly Father, that we turn to. So thank you for, for allowing me to share from the scripture 
And uh, let's uh, look particularly at uh, a couple of verses in Genesis 1 that are quite definitive of uh, who we are. And those two verses are Genesis 1, uh, verses uh, 26 and uh, 27. God said, let us make man, make humanity. And of course, the us here is uh, God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God is so great, so, um, so mysterious, so beyond our comprehension that, that we recognize uh, God uh, more than functioning on, on uh, different modes. God the Father uh, as, as one we look to as uh, God above us. God the Holy Spirit as uh, God that uh, dwells within. And God the Son as reveals himself in, in the creation that came to earth in Jesus and uh, and taught us and did miracles and proved his uh, his divine excellence and died on the cross for us and and conquered death and lives forevermore as our uh, elder brother and and as God with us uh, said in Hebrew Emmanuel. So the us is a very powerful phrase. God says, you know, let us make humankind in our image and in our likeness so that they may rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over livestock and over all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move on the earth. So God created humanity, created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Now, in these two verses, we have three important, really intensely important, definitive facts about who we are as human beings. Beginning with God, we have God saying, let us create humankind in our image. To really represent God, this uh, phrase, in our image, is an ancient kind of phrase, of, of people that uh, represent, you know, to be, to have uh, the endorsement of, of a superior, to uh, represent him or her, is, is to be that image. And so we are, uh, right from the beginning, the first uh, definition, the first description of humanity is to be in God's image and to represent God. The Bible repeatedly talks against having graven images, having manufactured images. We can't make an image of God. It's, it's wrong to do that because it, it then presumes to limit God in some way. But God has created um, some seven and a half billion images of God that are alive and well, or maybe not so well, on earth at this time. And, and so we fulfill, we are the ones that need to be served by one another because we are the image of God that God endorses each of us. So we can see God <clears throat> in, in terms of uh, people that are, of course, of, of our own ethnic backgrounds, um, age, uh, whatever. Uh, but we can also see God in his multiple faces as he is imaged in every human face. And uh, as we can see uh, his work and endorse his work by uh, being the kind of uh, human community, multi-ethnic, uh, multi-racial, multi-economic uh, level uh, human community of uh, people that respect, collaborate, uh, treat fairly uh, with one another, work for peace, um, have caring, loving, accountable attitudes toward one another. Uh, so this idea of being God's image is huge. And notice in these two brief verses, uh, uh, we are referenced as God's image, tw uh, not just twice, three times. Once in uh, verse 26 and twice in verse 27. It's as if the point has to be made 
But along the way, we're told that we are in his likeness as well. So there are things that we can learn about God by seeing one another that we want to actually be more and more like God, having uh, God's compassion, God's wisdom, having God's fairness, having God's creativity. There's so many things that we can do. And one of the nicest compliments you can tell someone is that they they have uh, fairness or they have uh, creativity or they have smarts, they have wisdom uh, that makes you think of God. Uh, much as you might say to uh, a, a, a person that where if you know their mother or father, uh, if you say to them, hey, you, uh, you really are honoring your, your mother, the, the way you really work at this, the way you have a devotion to a task, or you're really honoring your mother uh, with the wisdom that you're using in, in your life, or you're really honoring your father in terms of uh, uh, your commitment to excellence, or, or whatever. You know, those are lovely things to say, and it compliments both the parent and the child. But at the same time, uh, our Heavenly Father is honored when we praise, encourage, uplift uh, one another. People that we know and live with, or people that we're friends with, work with, go to school with, live next to, or related to, or even strangers, um, where there are human beings to really have this, this sense of, of respect, this sense of the sanctity of human life. So in our own time, tragically, there were many atrocities against uh, that sanctity, that uh, awesome divine calling that uh, each of us has, and, and yet humanity has been especially cruel to one another. Uh, there is cruelty to animals, cruelty, abuse of, of even plant life, but at, the, at the, the very deepest kind of cruelty is uh, inhuman treatment of one another. In our own uh, recent history on Earth, um, huge atrocities, um, just huge quantities of people uh, that are uh, that are killed and, and just out of race hatred, out of uh, genocide, this awful word genocide, to try to eliminate a whole uh, ethnic group or a whole race of people. And even people that are that are of the, the, the same you know, in the same neighborhood on earth uh, that, that just hate each other so much. The worst, some of the worst uh, wars, some of those uh, atrocious wars are so-called civil wars, which really sounds like a contradiction. How can you be civil and be at war? Be at war with one another, even, even blood brothers and sisters hating and, and trying to kill one another. God help us. But that's, that's how degraded we can be. You know, the, sometimes the things that are the most precious, the people that are the most precious, uh, can be treated with the most hatred, this inversion, that if there's no relationship, uh, then we have uh, less hatred. Tragically enough, they, in police departments, uh, half of the crimes that they investigate are so-called domestic violence crimes uh, when there's nothing domestic about being violent. Uh, it's, uh, again, uh, the tragedy is, is at least uh, hinted at in this uh, contradictory name of that crime. So uh, the uh, problems that we have living out the role of being an image of God, those problems are in the newspaper every day and we we know them because we, we know the people and maybe experience the, some of these atrocities. You know, the, if we are God's image, because we are God's image, uh, we ought to be protecting each other's lives, protecting the lives of vulnerable people, the unborn, uh, young people, the aged people, protect the, uh, the senior citizens, protect the poor. 
vulnerable, ple vulnerable people are still God's image. And, and to uh, just redefine the whole concept of abortion, there may be emergency situations where uh, for the life of the mother uh, that uh, abortions may be necessary, but those are intensely rare. Uh, to treat abortion as a kind of birth control is a stench to heaven. And, uh, you know, the, the similarly uh, so-called mercy killing or, uh, you know, euthanasia or um, exploitation harvesting of stem cells, which, which are uh, very precious uh, parts of what it is to be human, uh, to... Uh, to, to really get, create babies just to create uh, stem cells. It's just ugly. Uh, to promote, uh, instead, promote flourishing of human life at every stage, at every stage, in every form of human life. We ought to be promoting flourishing, even if someone has to be jailed because of some you know, just criminal bent, criminal habit, uh, inability to control outside of, of jail. Uh, there's no reason, there's no reason to, to make the, the, the jail a, a place of uh, inhumanity, uh, but instead to find ways to restore um, that image of God uh, within uh, the people, not constantly abuse. You know, I, uh, I had a, a first kind of awakening of, of abuse uh, that I took very seriously as a, as a child. And, in the beginning of eighth grade, when when I saw some of my uh, black friends being deeply disappointed that they were not allowed to be part of the uh, college preparation track uh, in the school I went to, uh, the all the seventh graders were together, but in eighth grade, two tracks, the college preparation and, and the other track were, were begun. And, and some of my African-American friends were obviously brilliant, could, were able to do uh, math questions uh, uh, as as well, if not better than I, and yet uh, they had they were stuck in general math, which uh, uh, I heard their descriptions. It was the most boring place on earth because they had learned all that stuff over and over, year after year, and and in uh, in then my whole whole attitude, my whole awareness got uh, even uh, much more uh, profoundly sad when I personally went to, um, you know, my friends, my so-called friends in the guidance office. They loved me because I was, you know, I was just a very sweet, cooperative student and caring person and uh, a straight-A student at the time, and they were uh, you know, holding me up as a model, and I go to the office, and I, I start with uh, my friend Jimmy Moore. Uh, he just hates, literally hates deeply this uh, general math course because it's so boring, so repetitive of stuff he's already learned. Could he at least take a test to to see if he could qualify to to show? Because he's, I gave him the, the questions uh, from my pre-algebra class and and he's able to figure them out faster than I and and I was just they turned to being angry at me for even suggesting that that um, that they made the slightest mistake in this case and so the uh, I, I got a taste I got a, a up close and personal in my face taste of the uh, tragedy of structural racism so we have all these atrocities, and, and we could go on and on and on about um, abuse of women, neglect of senior citizens, uh, uh, multiple wars going on at any given time, and, um, and just uh, huge numbers of abortions in uh, especially New York, uh, our town, the uh, uh, number of abortions exceeds the number of, of uh, live, healthy births. So we have huge potential to uh, reform, to, to have a, a better approach so that 
uh, we treat each other as God's image, and we see ourselves as God's image, and, and therefore we're accountable. So we have these atrocities that, we, that are wake-up calls that we're not living up to the way God began us, the, to our beginning with God. We instead need to address those atrocities. In part, big step would be to be accountable, to really safeguard the sanctity of every human life. And the word sanctity means holiness or sacredness. You know, when you go to a holy place, a sacred place, um, coming into church, coming into uh, uh, a very important uh, meeting, celebrating something uh, crucial, going to a wedding, you know, these sacred places, uh, what if we treat all humanity as sacred? To, to recognize the sanctity of every human life. You know, there's a movement in our time that has a wonderful name, <clears throat> just extraordinary, inspiring, factual uh, name, Black Lives Matter. And, and yet, if you read what they write and see what they say and see what they do, it's there's only mostly white people that take advantage of uh, moments of injustice to then uh, loot stores and, uh, and cause arson. And the police are told to stand down, uh, let them just express themselves, let them blow off steam, which is really the dumbest way. You know, if you know anything about raising children, uh, letting them just blow off steam is, is uh, not advised. Instead, we need to help people to be accountable themselves. So here we have a, a lot of spoiled white people under the name Black Lives Matter. In fact, often burning down black-owned businesses or min other minority-owned businesses, um, destroying uh, uh, big department stores in the very neighborhoods where black people live and making them have to drive miles and miles and miles to get uh, the goods that they need. And it's where they've worked, where they find employment. <clears throat> so these are riots that we've seen in, in, uh, in you know, the last uh, uh, several months have actually been more hurtful uh, to black lives. And then the very idea of defunding police. Uh, in New York, uh, police are uh, uh, huge, one billion dollars taken out of the police budget, and particularly the most effective unit, the undercover unit, the the uh, crime prevention unit, uh, and and when you don't have the crime prevention doing its job, the murder rate jumps about fifty percent, and other violent crimes as well. So it's really one of the dumbest ideas. Uh, instead of uh, let's train the police better, let's have more accountable uh, structures uh, for, for the police and for the community to be able to really partner with the police to, uh, to understand the police as their friends. Personally, when I'm walking down the street and I see a cluster of police people or just one police woman or man, uh, and I, I take a moment to just walk up to them and say, Thank you for the work that you do protecting all of us. We are grateful. So the uh, biggest uh, uh, problem in our own time, I think one of the biggest problems is that we, we teach a, a, a theory of evolution as the origins rather than a God-driven process where there is still a personal accountability. If we, if we only have a series of mutations, a long series of mutations, to be thankful for, then it's uh, uh, not going to work. And, and so we, if we see each other as genetic mistakes or mutations rather than images of God, we are, are bound to be abusive to one another and exploit one another and just be looking out for our own interests rather than, you know, for our own survival. You know, survival of the fittest as a motto for life rather than love one another rather than do unto others as you would want them to do to you, you know, rather than 
uh, being accountable to walk humbly uh, with our God. So the atrocities wake us up. We are called to be accountable because we are each God's image. And all the people that we work with are God's image too. So we can't just treat them as biological specimens, even marvelous biological specimens. We must be accountable. And so God has given us the authority. The key word here of being an image of God is to be an authority, to really represent the big purposes of God, to uh, represent uh, the key uh, goals that God lays out throughout the scripture and, and by his Holy Spirit that he has breathed into us at the beginning and restores into us as we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior and, and seek the presence of his Spirit to be ourselves the walking temples of the Holy Spirit. We have then God's authority to help change things and to, to really have respect to all people, to give a dignity to all and to uh, draw potential from all, the huge divine potential that God has implanted in every human body, every human soul, every human spirit. God has, has implanted huge potential way beyond what any of us or any other person has achieved. And to be able to, be able to continue to grow in God because we begin with God. We are beginning with God. That's the only real beginning. And so we can uh, really honor each other, respect the sanctity of your life and the other person's life and my life and everyone else's life. And in that respect, to really grow in dignity, grow in civility, grow in the potentials that God has implanted in us. Because we are created by God. And, and through Christ, through the blood of Christ, we are redeemed by God. Uh, we need to live that redemption, going back to God's purposes and, and God's extraordinary value that he has, has poured into every human being. May God help us now as we are into year 2021 to be able to live out and fulfill all these huge purposes planted there from the beginning.